Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa, Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk, and Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space, missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spaceship approaching a planet in a remote solar system. Commander, where did that thing come from? It's a glowing out there. It's headed right toward us. A meteor. Meteors don't glow in space. It's getting brighter. It's a ball of fire. There's another one. Where in the universe are they coming from? It's a weapon. A weapon? And it's some of Makor's work. Right. He's trying to make good his threat to destroy us. We'll be back in just a moment with a thrilling story, Prison Planet. It's quicker than a jet flight. It's quicker than the speed of light. It's Nestle's Quick, the miracle product that mixes so quick it gives you chocolate milk in seconds. Fellas and girls, have you tried instant Nestle's Quick? Nothing was ever so speedy. Here's all you have to do to get perfect chocolate milk. First, pour out your big, cold, frosty glass of milk. Then add two teaspoons of Nestle's Quick. That's right. You pour the milk first. Then you add Quick. Spoon it around once or twice, and there's your chocolate milk. Why, it practically makes itself. And wait till you taste that flavor. Quick is just like those great Nestle's chocolate bars. Yes, sir, it's got that special Nestle's chocolate flavor, that special Nestle's chocolate richness, that special Nestle's chocolate smoothness. It's a real soda fountain treat right in your own home. You're going to love having wonderful Nestle's Quick with meals, for snacks, and before bedtime. And you can tell Mom that Quick is good for you because it's fortified with vitamin D. And the more Quick you drink, the more milk you drink. So Mom's sure to approve. Ask her to get that big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick. And then you can join all the space patrollers in the most delicious, most chocolate, quickest treat in the universe. That's Q-U-I-K, Nestle's Quick. And now, today's space patrol adventure, Prison Planet. Buzz and Happy have returned to the Graxox star system half a million light years from the United Planets to search for the one remaining pilot of an ill-fated expedition. Three other pilots have already been found and have returned safely to Terra. Buzz and Happy realize that every moment spent in the unfriendly galaxy means increased peril, for Makor, guardian of the star system, has sworn to destroy them. While Happy watches the viewscopes for unfriendly ships, Buzz makes repeated attempts to contact the missing space patrol pilot by space upon. Men Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Lieutenant Stitter, element 4 of Expedition Enigma. Men Corey calling Lieutenant Stitter. Lieutenant Stitter, Terra 5. You got him. Section is terrible, Hat. Keep watching those views, but I'll try again. Yes, sir. There's no sighting so far. Corey to Lieutenant Stitter. Your signal is very weak. Keep talking. Repeat. Keep talking. We'll try to get a fix on your signal. I read you faintly, Commander. Would you repeat your orders? Lieutenant Stitter requesting repeat on orders from Commander Corey. Stitter must be thousands of DUs away. Yes, and Makor is causing the interference. It's that deflector field again, huh? Yes, if we don't contact Stitter soon, get into Star Drive, Makor will be coming after us. I wish we could make him listen to reason. He won't have to. He broke his word with us. And we outsmarted him and hurt his pride. He won't be satisfied until he gets his revenge. Well, I guess there are characters like that in every galaxy. I better try to reach Stitter again. Commander Corey calling Lieutenant Stitter of Expedition Enigma. Elsewhere, in the defense headquarters of the Graxox star system, Makor, guardian of the galaxy, confers with his chief aide, Sindrana. I've marked the star chart, Sindrana. This point indicates Corey's position. And the other intruder? The second ship is 40,000 omegas away from Corey. Its vector is indicated by this arrow. Oh, I see. And Corey is in communication with the other ship. Mm-hmm. To a very limited extent. Our deflector field is working quite successfully. It may be possible to send some of our ships after Corey and destroy him before he escapes from our galaxy. No one is going to get Corey but me. You understand? My own personal reputation depends on it. I've got the entire plan worked out. First, we will capture this uh, Lieutenant Stitter and his ship. That will be simple. Then we can turn our full efforts into getting caught. You say it will be simple to capture the other ship? Yes. 
Look at its vector. It is heading towards Zirgor. The prison planet? That's right. A maximum security base. A planet from which no news leaks to the rest of the galaxy. Except by my authority. Yes, but uh, I don't see how we can possibly... We will order this unwelcome visitor to lend on Zirgor. Will we do it? I got it all figured out. Now listen... Corley can contact Stitter, but we can. Lieutenant Stitter, element four of Expedition Enigma, calling Commander Corey aboard the Terra 5. An urgent message to Lieutenant Stitter of the United Planets Expedition. This is Maycor, Guardian of the Galaxy. I want to help you. Please acknowledge. Lieutenant Stitter here. You say you're the Guardian of the Galaxy? Yes. I am in charge of defenses of this star system, the region of space you're in now. I've already had contact with your Commander Corey and know that he's looking for you. We promise to give him all the help possible. That's certainly welcome news. Say, is it possible for you to relay a message to my commanding officer? No, not at present, on account of those solar radiations. I offer a suggestion if you see fit to follow it. Since you're working with Commander Corey and I'm lost, the best thing is to let you give the orders. Why, thank you, Lieutenant. It will be easier that way. I believe I know your present position. There should be a yellow star approximately uh, 20 degrees to the right of your present heading. It's 23 degrees for my instruments. Good. Uh, you're near the planet Zirgo. Make a landing on that planet. Then we'll notify Commander Corey where to find you. Planet inhabited? Yes, but uh, by a very primitive civilization. And I suggest that you carefully avoid any settlements for fear of alarming the natives. I understand. And I'll contact you later and help you establish your exact position on the planet so Commander Corey can locate you without any trouble. I'm very grateful, Maycor. Oh, this star system is always happy to help friendly visitors, Lieutenant. Now, don't be concerned about the Commander. I'll personally take care of everything. And uh, I wish you a safe landing on Zirgol. There, Sindana. You say? I still don't like the idea of sending him to the prison planet. The prison authorities see his ship that they'll report it. Didn't you hear me tell the stupid lieutenant to avoid all settlement? He'll never know he's landing on a prison planet. Until later, when we have him locked up. It would be better to do away with him. Suppose he talks. Yeah. Who would understand him without a translator? And there are no electronic translators on this prison planet. It would be foolish to do away with him. Because uh, we may need him later if we decide to attack Corey's solar system. I realize no one has ever returned from Zergal in the 12 Tarvin that has been operating as a prison. That's right. Not even the guards and official personnel. And the pilots who bring new prisoners there are not allowed to leave the ship. They must return without setting foot on Zergal. Mm. Are you sure there's nothing to worry about? Mm, nothing, Sindrana. We'll capture our lieutenant at his spaceship, and then we'll go after Commander Corey. Now come. Let's go to our ship and best off for Zirgol. Still encountering bad reception, Buzz and Happy continue their attempts to contact Lieutenant Stitter. This is the direction Stitter seemed to be heading. He either changed back there, or the deflector may cause him throwing it from his way off. Uh-oh. There's something in the viewscope, sir. A ship? No, sir. It's too big. A, a giant meteor, maybe. A small moon. A satellite of that kind. Sure, that's probably it. If we can contact Stitter again, we can use this little planetary system as a reference point. Mandacori aboard Terra 5, calling Lieutenant Stitter. Mandacori aboard Terra 5, calling Lieutenant Stitter. Some distance from Zergal, Makor and Sindrana adjust a special device on their spaceophone that modifies the deflector field. A few moments later, they establish contact with Lieutenant Stitter. Have you landed yet, Lieutenant Stitter? No, Makor. I'm flying at low altitude over a mountain range, looking for a place to set down. Are you near a settlement of any kind? I don't think so. I made a careful check by view scope from high altitude before I came in low. That's excellent. Uh, now, uh, from your space phone signal, you appear to be on the bright side of Zirgol. Correct. The sun is right overhead. Have you observed the large body of water? Yes, but it's beyond the horizon now. It's several hundreds of what we call miles to my right. Then you are over an entirely unpopulated region, Lieutenant. Land in the first suitable place you see. Very good, Maker. After your landing is secured, space upon me. I'll have no difficulty finding you. 
How about Commander Corey? Have you contacted him yet? No, but don't worry. One of our communication centers is certain to reach him soon. Make or I. There you are, Sindrana. That ship and its pilot are as good as in our hands. Your plan is working out very well, Maker. I confess that... Sindrana, the views go. It's a spaceship. Yes. And on a vector towards Zirgal. Possibly one of our own prison ships. If there were prisoners being consigned to Zirgal, I'd known about it. A supply ship, then? The prison planet has been self-supporting. For the last two, Tarvin. It must be Corey. He has managed to get some sort of a fix on Stidder's signal. Conversations with Stitter. If he has, there's nothing he can do about it. He'll never reach Zirgal. How are we going to stop him? It's not wise to engage Corey in combat. We've learned that fact. We won't need to get closer to him than we are now. Not if we use the Dero projectiles. It's forbidden to use the Dero projectiles, except... Except in the most extreme emergency. Well, isn't this one? Yes, but... But you must have permission from the Supreme Council of the Galaxy. That would mean telling them there are alien ships in our star system. I was able to obtain the Dero projectiles without a formality. The Supreme Council will never know. Take the control, Sindrana. I will launch the protocol. Sure, that was good we heard a moment ago. Huh? Can you stay on this vector, sir? Yes. Can you take us close to that planet? Man, that's not so safe with Mako or Living Force. Maybe the planet's uninhabited. The only contact stood her before Mako's tipped off. Hey, Commander. Commander, look. Where did that thing come from? It's glowing. It's headed right towards A meteor. Meteors don't glow in space. The meteor would have registered on a view space. It's getting brighter. It's a ball of fire. There's another one. We'll change our course. Well, where in the universe are they coming from? All of a sudden, two flaming blobs appear out of nothing. Hey, they're changing course too, Commander. Both of them swerved when we did. Either they're attracted to us or, or they're under some sort of control. It's a weapon, Hutton. There must be some of Makor's work. Right, he's trying to make good his threat to destroy us. They're gaining on us, sir. What are we going to do? We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, Tony, did I hear you telling the gang that you have a soda fountain at your house? That's right, Captain Tufel. Well, don't you think that's exaggerating just a little bit? Well, gee whiz, no. My mom always keeps plenty of Nestle's quick in our galley. And that's just like having a soda fountain. Because I can make up real chocolate milk just like a soda fountain treat any time I like. You see? Well, I guess I can't argue with that, Tony. Nestle's Quick is the greatest treat in the universe. Because it makes the greatest chocolate milk in the universe. Imagine being able to fix chocolate milk with the same wonderful rich flavor as your favorite Nestle's chocolate bars right in your house. And you can fix it just as quick as that. All you have to do is pour out your glass of milk. Add two spoonfuls of Nestle's Quick, spoon it around once or twice, and it's ready to drink. And you know, Nestle's Quick has plenty of what it takes to help build sound teeth and bones. Plenty of vitamin D. Another thing that's good is the more quick you drink, the more milk you're drinking. And that's great for all us space patrollers. Yes, everybody can have a soda fountain at home by just asking Mom to bring home the big brown and yellow can of Nestle's Quick. Then, anytime you like, meals or snacks, you can fix yourself a real chocolate treat. Nestle is quick. If you're like all us space patrollers, you'll love Nestle's quick. That's Q-U-I-K. Nestle's quick. Boy, is it chocolatey and good. And now, back to our space patrol adventure, Prison Planet. Makor, guardian of the galaxy, has tricked Space Patrol Lieutenant Stitter into landing in a deserted section of Zergal, a prison planet. When Makor and his chief aide, Sindrana, saw Commander Corey's ship approaching Zergal, he fired two day-roll projectiles at the Terra 5. Buzz and Happy realize their danger, but so far are unable to escape the strange flaming projectiles by evasive action. You'll just have to try to outrun them, Happy. Well, how about going into Star Drive? Maybe we'd be safe in hyperspace. Uh, we'd be plunging into an unknown dimension with no hope of finding our way back. Wow, th- those fireballs are gaining on us. They're getting bigger, growing in size. Maybe they'll burn themselves out before they hit us. I'm afraid not, Happy. That weapon is some strange energy force. I think it feeds the travel. On what? Microscopic particles in space. And we're a giant particle, so it's chasing us. Well, if we can't dodge them or outrun them, what are we going to do? Happy, what's the simplest way you know to get a bone away from a hungry dog? Gee, I don't know. Uh, unless it's to offer him a bigger bone. Exactly. It's 
just what we're going to do now. Huh? Gonna offer those hungry blobs of energy a bigger bone. We're changing back to the head right for that small moon. Will they go after the moon? Well, they may. The moon's small, but gigantic in comparison with our ship. We're gonna have to rely on instruments at this velocity, huh? Yes, sir. We'll have to work fast. You compute the moon's orbit. We'll leave it up to the automatic pilot control to skim us close to the moon's surface. Wow, this computer better work fast. The fireballs are really closing in. We've done all we can, Hap. Might as well relax. I think I must have fed the wrong data into the computer, Commander. I think we're going to crash. We've played our hand, Hap. We tampered with the controls. Now we might really make an error. Here we go. Open your eyes now, Captain. Huh? Did we... Did we... We missed the moon. How about those fireballs? They changed course with the moon. With the rear boost The rockets at work. I wonder what'll happen when they collide with the... Oh, look at that. The whole moon is burning up. It isn't the moon any longer. It's a sun. A miniature star. Oh, that's what would have happened to us with our instruments. Picking up all kinds of wild radiation. Yeah. I'll bet we couldn't pick up a space phone signal from Slitter now if he was in the next compartment. Maybe hey, there's probably a few DUs away trying to figure out what happened. We'll cross over to the other side of the moon's orbit and hide out. Hey, come on. You destroyed the moon. The dirt projectiles destroyed the moon. Stop jibbering. The important question is, did we get Corey? Lieutenant Stitter calling Makor, Guardian of the Galaxy. Lieutenant Stitter calling Makor, Guardian of the Galaxy. A lot of interference, considering how close we are to the planet. It's the Darrow radiation. Maker to Lieutenant Stitter, have you landed? Yes. My ship is on a grassy plain near a wooded section. Good. Keep reporting at intervals. We will locate your exact position by your signal. Very good, Maker. Oh, any word from Commander Corey? There is nothing to worry about now, Lieutenant. Just keep in contact, and we'll have you in safe hands in a very short time. Maker out. You'll be in safe hands, all right. The hands of the guards of the prison flat. From his grounded ship on the planet Zergal, Lieutenant Stitter continues his periodic messages to his supposed rescuers. Finally, a strange ship appears over the horizon and lands a few yards from his own. Two men emerge from the ship and walk toward his space patrol cruiser. As Stitter turns to open the hatch to welcome them, a signal light flickers on the space phone panel and a buzzer sounds. Surprised, Lieutenant Stitter steps to the space phone and quickly turns to a special frequency. Lieutenant Corey aboard Terra 5, calling Lieutenant Stitter. Urgent. Commander Corey to Lieutenant Stitter. Lieutenant Stitter here, Commander. Stitter, you're in danger. Blast off immediately. In danger? Well, there's some mistake, sir. I've been in contact with the Guardian of the Galaxy. He's ready to rescue me. He's tricked you. Get off that planet before he lands. But his ship has already landed. In fact, there are two men about to come aboard. They'll be in here before I can blast off. Are they in space suits? No, sir. Then you won't need one either. Get out of that ship. Go to the cargo hold and go out to the emergency hatch. Don't try to fight them. I think they're entering the airlock now, sir. Hurry, Stitter. Take a miniature space phone. We'll find you and pick you up. Hurry out. Strange. He's not in the control compartment. Wait a minute. Look out through the port. He left the ship. Yes, he's running toward the woods. That may be suspicious. I I'll go after him. You return to our ship and wait for me. The Terra 5 flies low over the planet Zergo while Buzz and Happy scan the ground with a telescopic view scope. I sure hope Stitter got away. Can't we try to contact him now, sir? All right, Happy. We better try too soon. By now, he's either captured by Makor or he's far enough away to risk talking to us. Commander Corey calling Lieutenant Spitter. Corey to Spitter. If you read me but can answer, we're looking for you. And we'll keep looking till we find you. I hate to think of what Makor will do to him if he catches him. Judging by the fragments of space upon conversation, we intercepted Makor and lost Spitter alive. I sure hope so. I'll try again. Commander Corey calling Lieutenant Spitter. Lieutenant Spitter here, Commander. Everything's all right. You got away from Macon? Yes, sir. I just ran into the woods. I'm all right now. And this is a wonderful planet. Wonderful. I never felt so good in my life. Now, Stitter, listen. You're still in danger. Give me a few landmarks so I can find you. Never mind, Commander. I don't want to leave this place ever. 
Ditto, what's wrong with you? Wrong? Nothing's wrong. Absolutely nothing. What could possibly be wrong in this beautiful, wonderful world? Stitter, Lieutenant Stitter, you're still under orders. I demand an explanation. There's nothing to explain, Commander. I like it here, that's all. Thanks for your trouble, sir. And goodbye. Stitter out. What's that in there? Hey, I knew. Make one study and make him put on an act. That was no way. For some reason, he just wasn't going to be this. Commander, look. There are two ships down there. Yes, down near the edge of the wooded section. Stitters and make ones. Yes, sir. And beyond it, in the clearing, there's a man. Just a few scope hat. A little more. There, that's it. It's Stitter, sir. See? Space Patrol uniform. There's room in the clearing to set the ship down here. While I land the ship, you check the atmosphere sample we scooped up. Well, the air must be okay, sir. Lieutenant Stitter didn't complain about it. No, he certainly didn't. Make that test happen. Yes, sir. Using the repeller ray, Buzz brings the Terra 5 in on a vertical descent into the clearing. As they leave the ship and approach the lieutenant, Stitter leans against a tree and watches them with amused interest. Lieutenant Stitter. Hi, Commander. Hello, Happy. Lieutenant? Now, come on, Lieutenant. Let's get into the ship. Why is everybody so serious? This is a glorious planet. Why would anyone want to leave it? Still, you're being affected by the atmosphere. There's a gas in here that tests similar to nitrous oxide, sometimes called laughing gas. It gives you a false feeling of well-being. <laughs> Isn't it great, Commander? I'd grab him. We'll carry him aboard. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't hurt him. Remember, he can't help the way he's acting. If you don't get aboard that ship right away, we'll, we'll be just like him. Come on, Lieutenant. Easy now. All three of hey. you... Turn around and raise your hand. Make me. I warn you, don't force me to use this weapon. Easy, sir. Well, I see you have your translating devices with you. That will make it easier for both of us. Come on, we're going on a walk through the woods to my ship. Why is everybody so anxious to leave this wonderful world? Don't worry, you'll be back. You'll be here permanently, Lieutenant. Hey, great! <laughs> you won't think it's so funny when you find out what Zirgor really is. It's a prison planet. This is a prison planet? Yes. Some distance from here is a guarded prison. It was built by prison labor from other planets. And no one who has been brought to Zirgol has ever left it. Now, I call that a mighty nice arrangement. For you, perhaps. But not for Corey and the cadets. After I get what information I want from them, they will be destroyed. Now, come on, all of you. He's running things as if now. Yes, sir. First, I better relieve you of your weapons. Just keep your hands raised. That's it, Commander. Now, you cadet. And don't move or I'll bust you to bits. Hey, Commander, how come the atmosphere doesn't make this guy good nature? He's been exposed as long as Lieutenant Stitter. He's fighting it like we are. Stitter was caught off guard and didn't realize what was happening. All right, let's go. Stand right where you are. Are you there with the blaster? Drop it. The stranger has your covered, Makor. He's right behind you. Well, that's wonderful advice, Makor. Drop it. Very well. Do you know who I am? And of course, you're Makor, guardian of the galaxy. And you, obviously, are an escaped prisoner. If you don't put down that weapon and let me go, you will be in for severe punishment. <laughs> you won't think it's so funny when the guards catch you. A guard? Makor, listen, I am a guard. Janik, the guard. Ridiculous. Why are you wearing your prisoner's uniform, then? I like to change off. I'm a guard, all right. It's my job to keep nosy officials like you from interfering with the happiest planet in the galaxy. Commander, this is a madman. Help me escape from him, and I'll let you return to your home planet. Nobody leaves Zergoff. It would spoil everything. Janet, what do you mean, spoil everything? Isn't this a prison planet? Oh, well, not to us. We have plenty to eat and practically no work to do. Zergoff is a paradise. I was in one of the original work crews sent here to build a prison. When we saw what we had here, we invented a little scheme to keep Zergoff a paradise. This is impossible. Zergol is a maximum security prison. The worst criminals in the galaxy are sent here. Yes, it's our only source of immigration. If the truth ever got out about Zergol, it would be swamped with honest people. In a short time, there would be a shortage of food. Fighting, robbery, murder would be everywhere. You mean there's no crime here now? Why should there be? There's plenty for all. If any man has any tendency to be nasty, the effect of the atmosphere makes him a pretty jolly citizen after a few days. I wouldn't stay here. I can't stay here. Yes, Maker, you're afraid the people you falsely accused of crime will get revenge. But don't worry. You'll be safe. We have a saying here that everything grows on Zirkel. But hate it. I understand the reason you want no one to leave here, but we three are from another galaxy. All we want is to return home. We'll never reveal your secret or bother you, I promise. Well, something tells me you're sincere. But my duty to the others forces me to make you stay. 
I assure you, after a while, you won't want to leave. Well, that's not the point. We have our duty to our solar system, just as you have to your planet. What right should you ask of life than to live on Virgo? Look around you uh, at the trees, the flowers, the blue sky. I'll take that weapon, Jared. <laughs> Hap, pick up your gun. Keep him covered. Yes, sir. Quick thinking, Corey. No, I'll give this convict a lesson in respect. Make her. Make her break it up. Let go of it. I'll give him a crashing. You'll remember. No, you won't. Did he hurt you, Janet? Not much. <laughs> Thanks for taking him off. Well, you certainly hit him. He's unconscious. You better watch him. His spaceship is outside the woods. He may have a partner aboard. I know. It's in Granum. He's already been captured. Well, my two friends and I are blasting off now. What I said before still goes. We'll keep you a secret. Well, Thank you. Happy, you ready? Yes, sir. I've got all the weapons. Lieutenant Stitter? I'm ready, Commander. I guess I lost control for a while. Sorry, sir. It's all right. Goodbye, Janet. Goodbye, Commander. Good luck. Goodbye. Come on, men. Let's get back to Terra. Uh, but I like it here. I think I'll stay. Goodbye, Commander. Happy. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. What's new? Nestle's new. Nestle's what? Coconut. Ah, that's my favorite verse, Commander, because I sure go for Nestle's great new coconut bar. So I see, Hap. Well, you've practically gone through the entire month's supply already. Gee, Commander, I just can't help myself. When I bite into that luscious, thick, rich milk chocolate just loaded with crisp, toasted coconut, I sort of lose my head. i got to keep eating. Uh, I'll admit, there never has been such a delicious chocolate bar as the new Nestle's coconut bar. Well, except maybe those other sensational Nestle's chocolate bars. Uh, you know, the, the rich milk chocolate, the almond bar, and wonderful crunch. Oh, stop. Now you're making me Oh, what are we waiting for? Be my guest, Commander. Have a Nestle's chocolate bar. And that goes for you, too, fellas and girls. Remember, in E-S-T-L-E-S, Nestle's makes the very best chocolate. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are exploring the ruins of a lost civilization. Suddenly aware that a man is following them, Buzz pulls Happy into a dark passage. We can see us stuck in here. We've got the internet now. He can't see us in the dark passage, but he'll be there. Oh, Commander, that big stone at the entrance. It's moving. He knows we're in here. Yeah, but no man in the universe could move that stone. It weighs tons. He's not from this universe, huh? Commander, he sealed us in. We're trapped. Be with us again next week for the thrilling Space Patrol story, The Crown of Darjeeda. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Bela Kovach, Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, and Tony Sides. Dick Tufel speaking. This week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's Chocolate Bar. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the armed...